In uh, previous videos, we have seen that the present value of an annuity can be calculated using this formula. And the future value of an annuity can be calculated using this formula. What I want to do in this video is do two things. First, I want to emphasize a very important point that you must bear in mind when you are trying to implement these formulas. And then I'm going to show you how you can sort of use these to understand, um, you know, what is happening behind the scenes when you're calculating these present values and future values. So first, let me draw your attention to uh, one thing that we have kind of been assuming, which is important when developing these formulas. When we were determining the present value of an annuity, so let's suppose that our uncle comes out and says, hey, you know what? Uh, I am here you are today and I'm going to give you some dollar amount C one year from now I'm going to give you the same dollar amount uh, C two years from now and I'm going to do this for say some number of years say T so the last one that you're gonna get is last C that you're gonna get is T years from now in the past we have tried and answered questions like this like what is the present value of this cash flow stream and so that's when we've said that look we know t years it's the same constant amount c if the interest rate r is known then this is the formula that we can implement to determine uh, this present value right so this is how we can determine how this how much this annuity is worth to us today uh, we have also seen that if we had the same kind of cash flows but we were more interested in something like future value of these cash flows uh, than this formula applies. So let's suppose that uh, instead this problem is more about you saying, look, what if I deposit C dollars in my bank account one year from now and then another two years from now? And so I keep on doing this for T years. If the question that I'm trying to answer is how much will I have in my account T years into the future? It's the same cash flow stream lasting for the same number of years T, but here the answer, here the, uh, here your interest is more in about future value, and so in this formula applies, right? This this whole thing. All right. The one important thing. This is critical. This is critical. The one important thing that you must remember when you are implementing these formulas, whether it's present value formula or future value formula, is that both these formulas uh, implicitly assume that the first cash flow, that the first cash flow is going to occur one year from today or is happening next time period. This is important. In fact, whenever we have annuities in which the first cash flow is occurring one year from today or in the next time period so right so it's not today it's one year from today or one time period from today we call these annuities ordinary ordinary annuities so this is an example of an ordinary annuity it doesn't matter whether you are interested in determining present value or future value of an annuity what makes an annuity an ordinary annuity is that the first cash flow must be occurring at time period one or one year from today if we're dealing with years these formulas only apply in situations where the first cash flow is occurring one year from today or when we're dealing with an ordinary annuity we will later on see some adjustments to this uh, so we'll see that in the future but bear in mind that you know that this is the assumption that is going behind these formulas so that's the one thing the other thing that I want you to appreciate is that um, you know you can get a deeper insight into the numbers uh, that we have uh, gotten when implementing these present value future value formulas so I'm gonna try and uh, give you a different perspective on some of the calculations you may have seen in the past so in the past I did this example with you there's a previous video on this Let's suppose that your benevolent uncle has promised to give you $500 every year for the next seven years, where you'll get the first 500 one year uh, from today. So you know how this looks on the timeline. Um, you're basically going uh, seven years out into the future. You're getting your first 500 right around here, which is at the end of uh, year one. 
and then another here at uh, year two, right? And so the last one that you get here is at the end of year seven. Uh, previously, we have uh, tried to answer the question, you know, what is the present value or how much is this cash flow stream worth to you today? And uh, I mean, you, you can implement the formula too. the present value is uh, 500 into one minus one over 1.04, where four is the interest rate. You raise that to the power seven and you basically divide the whole thing by 0 0.04. So we've, we've seen this in a previous video as well. This solves out to about 3,001.02 or 3,001.03 dollars. So what is the interpretation of this number? You're basically saying to your uncle that, look, you giving me $500 every year for the next seven years is as if you're giving me three thousand and one dollars and about two cents today uh here's another way to make sense of this number let's suppose let's suppose uh that you got the first five hundred dollars uh from your uncle uh and you took that and put it in a bank you say you know whatever i'm going to get from my uncle i'm just going to start putting it in a bank and so you make your first $500 deposit in the bank at the end of the first year because that is when your uncle gives you the money. So you immediately go put it in the bank and then you get the next 500 two years from now. You get the last one at the end of the seven years. If I now ask you how much will you have in your bank account by the end of seven years? Now, all of a sudden, I'm asking a question about future value, right? You got your money from your uncle every year $500 and you started putting it in a bank how much will you have by the end of seven years you would say ah I know the answer to that the future value formula tells me that I will have 500 uh, and then you do 1.04 where 4 is the interest rate that you'll be earning uh, every year so this is raised to the power 7 I subtract the 1 and then do divided by 0. 0, 0.04. If you'll do this math, you will find that you will basically have about $3,949 and about, about 15 cents by the end of the seven years. Why is this calculation interesting? Because remember we said that your uncle giving you $500 every year for seven years was as if he was giving you three thousand and one dollars today well let's suppose that your uncle had instead of giving you this cash flow stream what's suppose let's suppose your uncle said look i'm going to give you three thousand and one dollars and two cents and you'd be like yeah that's fine that's totally fine because that's exactly how much these 500s are worth to me today you know how did you factor that in because if you actually get three thousand and one dollars right here at time period zero and I ask you, what if you took that amount and put it in the bank? How much would you have by the end of year seven? This is not an annuity that I'm talking about. We're talking about you taking $3,001 and about two cents, putting it in a bank, and let that grow for seven years. So what would be the future value of that amount? And that's just one amount. So the future value of that amount would be well, that amount would remain in the bank for seven years, right? So you'd simply do 3,001.02, and you do, this will basically get compounded interest of about 4% every year for seven years. What we're saying is that when you'll do this math, this will come out to exactly 3,949.1. Five. There might be some rounding off error here, but the key point is this. The reason why receiving a series of 500s uh, from your uncle is like you getting just $3,001 uh, today is because whether you put these in the bank when these come to you, and or whether you get this amount lump sum today and you put this in the bank after seven years you'd have the same amount it is in that sense 
that these two uh, receiving these this cash flow stream is equivalent to receiving three thousand and one dollars and two cents today so hopefully this will give you some additional insight into what these numbers are really capturing